Welcome. It is good to be together uh, to worship this evening. And we start off our, uh, our season of Lent. Uh, and during this time, we'll be humbling ourselves, as the Bible says, uh, afflicting ourselves sometimes. Some of you may want to fast or give something up. Uh, and you might want to add something great, too, is like a, a more prayer, more being in the Bible. But regardless, it's a special time, and we start out this evening uh, with a prayer of repentance that comes from the Bible, from Psalm 51. And this is the passage that we'll be uh, looking at in our uh, devotional meditations in just a few moments. So welcome, and please take your bulletin, and let us begin with this prayer. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you love all that you have created, and you forgive the sins of those who come to you with humble and contrite hearts. Create in us clean and honest hearts so that as we repent of our sins, we may receive full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first reading is from Joel, the prophet, chapter 2. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and have pity and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord will be jealous for his land and take pity on his people. The Lord will reply to them, I am sending you grain, new wine and oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. This is the word of the Lord. And our next reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks.
Please stand with me for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. And please be seated. The most beautiful prayers are in the Bible itself because uh, it is the Word of God. So you know you're praying correctly when you're praying these words. And uh, it starts out with Psalm 51. It says, uh, a Psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. This is frighteningly public, uh, what happened with David. He, uh, it says, first of all, that he was supposed to be off like kings are the spring to, to be at war. But instead of going off with his troops, he stayed at home. I was just thinking a little while ago, if all of our presidents had to go off in the front lines of war, they'd probably be a little choosier about when they went to battle. But David didn't go this time, and he, he stayed behind. So it seemed like there was something wrong a bit already, and then he of course he saw Bathsheba, and being king, he had power that he could, uh, even though she was a married woman, uh, have relationships with her. And at first, he tried to cover it up, and he uh, he brought her husband back because he was afraid she could get pregnant, and uh, if his her husband came back from battle, stayed a while. Who would know who the father was? They just assume it was him. But when he came back, he refused to go in the house, and he slept out in front, outside the front door. He was kind of angry with David that he's back out of the battle. And so that didn't work. Uh, so he sent him back into battle, and he gave a message to his general, take Bathsheba's husband, put him out on the front lines, then just pull back. Then he'll be killed. And uh, then he thought all this will be covered up. But uh, 
David had the same thing actually done to him when he was a young man. King Saul wanted to kill him, so he would send him out to battle and hope he would die, and he put him in the most dangerous places. But the prophet Nathan came in with a message from God, and he revealed to him just how serious his sin was. And this is after all of this happens, and this is David's public prayer. It's a beautiful prayer of repentance. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. He didn't want them just covered up. And the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, means the Day of Covering. He wanted them blotted out, forgiven, taken away. He goes on to say, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And he was being honest with God. And he says this, he says, Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Now obviously sinned against Bathsheba. He sinned against her husband, not only in committing adultery, but he sinned against her husband by having him killed. But he realized that sin is something that we do against God and breaks our relationship with him. And he confesses that. Against you only, O Lord, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And he says in verse 6, Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being. Now, sometimes it's really hard to confess and admit, and be honest even with ourselves about things that we have done wrong, where we've sinned and we hurt others, whatever we have done. But the truth has to surface in order to repent. Because if we blame everyone else and we look every other direction, we never repent for our own sin. And that's why David says, you delight in truth. So he says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. So he was going through a very miserable time of guilt and darkness in his life. And he wanted that joy in God, if it's possible, to have forgiveness and joy again. And of course, this all points to David's line. Jesus was the son of David way down in generations. And he would die on the cross. On Ash Wednesday, it's a custom in many churches. And I've already mixed some olive oil up with some ashes from palm leaves. And... Uh, it's a custom to have the sign of the cross on your forehead because the cross is God's weapon of victory over Satan, over sin, over guilt, over all these things that we can start anew. We can be forgiven. We can be washed totally clean. We can be born again. And we can also have a new day when we have joy replace our guilt and gladness replace our grief and sorrow. And he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Sin separates us from our God. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with the a willing spirit, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. And when people have experienced the forgiveness of God, one of the first things they do is, I want to serve God. I want my life to change. I want to do something for him. David says, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. The blood of Uriah the Hittite was on his mind on his shoulders, on him. He was guilty. 
He says, deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. It will lead to worship. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you will not delight in sacrifice or give it. I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit. When you come to God and you have a broken heart, a broken spirit, God sees that and he reaches out and says, I forgive you and I will heal you and I will return joy to your life. The psalm, verses 18 and 19, takes a turn. It says, do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. He knew that he was the king. There are ramifications when the leader of a nation sins against God and breaks his law. And David knew that the consequences could fall upon the nation of Israel because it would be his fault. So he says, I'm repenting, Lord. Please do not punish your people because of me. In Colossians chapter 2, if you look again in your bulletin, it's a confession of faith from the facts in Colossians chapter 2 about Jesus. In Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And we have been given fullness in Christ who is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature, not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made me alive with Christ. He forgave me all my sins. Having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. So we're going to take a, a time of prayer and then we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And uh, Martin Luther would say that, and he would give all the different laws of God. And after you went through the different laws, we're going to look at some of the Ten Commandments in the following Wednesdays to come. You come to the realization that you need Jesus, that you need forgiveness of sins. And he said, one, if you don't think of anything else. Remember that his blood was shed for the forgiveness of sins, for the forgiveness of your sins. And as you believe in him and you focus on those words and you receive the bread and the wine and the body and blood of our Lord, you receive by faith the forgiveness of sins. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, many of us have heard on the news that there was shootings at the celebration parade with the Kansas City Chiefs. Lord, we as your people, your created ones, we need you so much. We need you individually in our lives. We need you in our homes and our families. We need you in this nation, in our country. Lord, we need you to have mercy upon us because we are truly a sinful people. 
Lord, we pray for those who have died, and there are so many who are hurting. There are so many who need you. There are so many who are sick. Lord, we need you, and we want to take a moment of silence in your holy presence right now and either be silent or just pour out the request of our heart before you. Lord, in so many ways, we've turned away from your word as a nation, and we deserve your punishment and your judgment. But Father, we do pray that you would have mercy upon us, that you would turn us back to you. And we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer as we do pray. Father, we pray that this 40 days of Lent will be a time that we can draw closer to you, we pray for the days as they come up in the great celebration of the resurrection of life. Lord, bring revival and renewal to all of us. So Father, we pray that you would be with us now as we celebrate and observe the Lord's Supper as you instructed us to. In Jesus' name, amen. And our service continues on page 216 in your hymnals with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, usually on a Ash Wednesday service, we I just served the bread and wine to you, and I just invite you to come up as you will to receive the Lord's Supper. So come now. All things are now ready. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Now that is a sacrament which means God took something physically, bread and wine, and made his promises and put his word to it. And so there's a special blessing.
that comes through the reception of the sacrament. The next, the imposition of ass is, is a beautiful tradition for many, but it's optional. But if you would like to receive the, the imposition of ashes after the benediction, I'll pray a short prayer. And just like you came up for uh, the Lord's Supper, if you come up, I have some ashes mixed with olive oil. And I will just put the mark of the cross on your forehead. So, receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Almighty God, you created us out of the dust of the ground. May these ashes remind us that we are dust and shall return to dust. May they also remind us of the cross of Christ by which we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.